Now we're going to talk about Goa, and Goa is a tool that we've used to help do microservices, and that's about all I understand of it. <laughs> In addition, I understand that there's pluses and minuses to all choices. Yeah. And uh, insert Robert Frost's poem here, The Road Not Taken. <laughs> but uh, I think Goa, uh, you've, you've mentioned like, okay, there's some downsides and some upsides, but the next version of it has eliminated a lot of those downsides. Yeah. And oh, it's oh, continued oh. to improve, mm -hmm. but it's like something that helps build microservices. Yeah, so yeah, go, so we've been using Goa 1. Um, Goa v2 is under development. It's actually good enough you could actually use it, but not quite for production yet. It's still got some things that might change here and there, so we're not using Goa version 2 yet. Um, however, I will say when I, pl I, I played around with it, Goa 2 did solve, uh, I think, just nearly every problem I had with Goa 1. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good, good sign. So what Goa is, is um, so I described in microservices the most important bit is how they talk to each other. Yeah. That's basically the first thing you write. Uh, or you, you, you sketch that out. So whether on paper or whatever. Yeah. So Goa is, Goa's design philosophy is actually that. Design first, then win. Nice. And that's, it, it, what, they're, what they're saying is you design your API, your endpoints yeah. for communicating with the microservice, and then you write your code. Uh, you, you, in this case, they, they say win because it helps you out with yeah, some like stuff it. based off that. So it makes me think of uh, South Park. Design <laughs> I, first, I, step one, design. Step two, hmm. Step three, win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Goa works is, uh, is the, it, they call it the API design life cycle. You design a microservice, by describing out all its endpoints, yeah. then you implement the microservice by putting out anything that you, uh, by filling out how it actually does those endpoints. And then maybe you need to extend um, some extra features that don't quite fit into the rest, of the, the rest yeah. of the system. So like if you're creating some sort of chat server, you can't really design an endpoint for a chat server quite as easily or well as something else. Sure. So that would be, that would kind of go under the extend stuff. So, what go? Let me uh, pull open a sample kind of Goa document here um, to get started. Uh, design API. Um, so with Goa, you start off by uh, designing your um, API. So that is you. Just, so you say. So this is your your microservice. So this is my team microservice. It's called Teams. It's got a description. Um, it's run, it's gonna run HTTPS uh, and uh, and it's gonna run either HTTP or HTTPS and it's gonna have a URL and then here's all, all endpoints HTTP endpoints that are talking to this will start off with slash API slash team mm -hmm. so so if you send anything to Greater Commons that goes to slash API slash team it'll be for this microservice so var underscore you're throwing away the variable and you're basically um, Underscore. That's when I yeah, throw, throw away, away the throwaway variable you, and underscore. You, I think about, about the it. the init when you init with an underscore, it like runs that code, but then it doesn't assign it to any variable. So that's kind of yeah. the same thing here. Yeah, you you sometimes will see uh, functions that return two values, a value yeah. and an error, and yeah. all you care about is checking the error, or you don't care about the yeah. error. You, that's an, that's another time you'll use the underscore often. And then API is uh, APIs from Goa. Yeah, That's APIs from Goa. That's a function. It takes two arguments. It takes a name and then it Anon and then an anonymous and function. And then an anonymous function. So Goa is written in Go, so you can use valid Go code. So yeah. you can put the if statements in it. Yeah. But it's almost easier to think of it as not actual code. Go. Yeah. You think it's easier to think of it as its own like markup language, like yeah. like XML, instead of thinking of it as Go. Uh, it is valid Go which is helpful every once in a while. Like for example, um, I'm not putting HTTP or an actual URL here directly. I'm s instead pulling them from an imported right. location. Perfect. But for the most part, Love I think it. of it as something separate from actual Go. Now, how come you've imported design and uh, API DSL and you've uh, assigned those to dots and so then you're not, you're not, you know, like with secrets, you got secrets.scheme and secrets.hostname and mm -hmm. that's coming from package secrets, which is yeah. in imports. But with uh, design it's, and API DSL, it's just given to a period, and then you're not having to prefix yeah. it with the package name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If it's got, if it's a period, you don't have to prefix it. This is yep. considered bad go for yeah. pretty much every circumstance except for this one. Okay. 
So you, you, you never actually want to use a period for an import unless you're making a design language style thing like this. Sure. I just so, wanted to point that out because that might throw people for a loop, yeah. as it did for me the first time yeah. I saw it. <laughs> so, so go you design. So this is like an overall like API information for your your entire like general information for your microservice. Cool. Um, after you design that, um, you Goa calls them. Uh, you design with Goa calls resources. So a resource would be like one type of like object that your micro, that certain microservice might handle. Okay. So like um, for courses, it might have a resource for the course, a, a resource for sections within a course, and a resource for lessons within that. Yep. Um, so, so for the team's microservice here, it's got a team resource, a members resource for team members, and then uh, another one for training for uh, other stuff in there. So, so you so you define a resource as a resource. Uh, it's it's an object managed by this microservice. Um, so you define the resource, you give it a name, and then inside the anonymous function, you can give actions on that resource. Cool. And an action. So so for team, you you can create a team. So the anonymous or you can function. Get a team. So this anonymous function. Can I borrow your mouse for a second? Here's the anonymous function. It goes from here. And then you got that, and then it goes and down to all of that, and then it ends right here. That, that's the end for action. So this this that anonymous function goes all the way down. Oh, wow. It goes all the way down. That's the end for action. And so here, this team part, we saw that team right here, right? Like, this is that title teams connected? This is a lowercase team. That's not necessarily Are those connected? Related. No. No. So that's just, API team? So, yeah. So that's connected it's, to it's this? It's basically that API is called team. This resource is also called team. Not necessarily yeah. related, okay. but uh, right. often... But most, from a logic standpoint, they're connected, yeah. but not from yeah. a code not standpoint. Not from a code standpoint, okay. no. So right. most microservices will have a resource with the same name as their, as their service okay. because that's the primary thing it's managing. Yeah. So, so teams microservice ha, uh, manages teams. So there's problem. So there's going to be a resource called team. Okay. So to understand this, this is actually like we need to go in and, and look at all the documentation for Goa, and look at the Goa training. They have probably a training video on their site. There's a couple, yeah. Yeah, and just look at Goa and how to use Goa. Mm -hmm. And then once you use Goa, you can come here and you understand all this. Yeah. So. And then the benefit of this is that when you get all this, just sort of what did you call it? It was like a design, design specification design language. Design specification, yeah. DSL. Yes. Is that what it's called? That's design it, yeah. specification language. Yes. Uh, so when you get all this specified, Goa then looks at that and then just generates a ton of cool stuff for you code yes. and documentation right yes exactly so yes what so you design everything with like this in goa and then you tell goa to, you you tell goa about the design specification you created and uh goa will generate uh all the code all the http code to talk http get all the values from your design specification uh, extract them all put them into native go types so you don't so if it's like json it'll extract from the json uh uh, unmarshal it into the proper types and then you can just work with the actual like values you don't have to worry about HTTP at all you just worry about this action got called on this resource so once you you were motivated to learn this because there's a lot of repetitive redundant rote work yes right that you're like ah gotta do this again it was just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like high level yeah. high high but, thinking it was just mundane coding with like, potential for human error yes right yeah and, so and, like nearly every endpoint needs an id for something yeah all ids are numbers so for yeah. every, for nearly every single endpoint i had to write a code to get a number from a string yeah and had to check it to make sure it was valid yeah and so that was something i had to do for every service it was not new it was something i do every time and then i could make a mistake on it each time i did it yeah so with goa i just say I get a I get a value here. It's a number, yeah. And then I've got a number inside my function. Yeah. And so this this you 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 said wow. What used to take you this much to write, you now write like with this much, yes. right? And it used you, to take you four hours. Now you could do it in yeah. forty minutes. So oftentimes, yes. Yeah. 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 So and then the other advantage to Goa is uh, the Swagger uh, files. So I've got this little uh, Swagger 
resource here, which I literally just copy paste whenever I get a new service. I don't bother like writing it out every time. Yeah. Such a weird name, Swagger. Yeah, like, uh, they've they've renamed it since then to Open API. Yeah, but Go the, Goa version one is still using the uh, original Swagger, swagger stuff. File. So it's like check it out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Swagger. So the Swagger is documentation. So you, I, I've described how to create a team here. It, it's got a payload. It's got parameters. It returns possible values. Um, I've described all this kind of, uh, here. Oops. The swagger file has all that written out in such a way that you can actually look up on the uh, internet. We use a, you can, you can look up a swagger, uh, let's see, swagger viewer. Uh, they uh, exist in uh, a number of different places um, as duplicates actually of a couple places. Um, this is not the one I'm thinking of. Well, the one we like to use is called a pet store, petstore.swagger.io. Wow, there's so much stuff. So you give it the uh, URL to that Swagger uh, information. So this URL here. And then uh, it will give you but you gotta have this. Stuff. You have it at your live Greater Commons, right? Yeah, I'm not live at the moment, so it's I can't pull open. And it can't be lo it can't be local source. It has to be like off of the off um, of the deploy it, version. It can't be it can't be file, but it can be off okay. of your boot. It, it can, can be, be local. It can be local host agent. Oh, though. This will work off of that. Wow. Yeah. So actually, I can actually put in uh, uh, API uh, say course swagger. I think this will work. No, I've got it locked. Okay, never mind. Secure. I've got it. I've got it blocked for security reasons. But uh, so yeah, you'd normally just put put in the URL to a Swagger file, and even uh, if it's localhost. Even if it's localhost. Cool. And uh, this will give you um, a pretty view for everything. So like for this particular hypothetical uh, API microservice, it's got pet resources or it's got pets. You can add a pet to a store, and when you do so, you need to send a post request to this URL, and here's the values you need, and it will return and it will return this status, this response. That's awesome. And there's no extra work that you have to do for that. That's you, awesome. You just write you just write your Goa code that you would normally use for your own use, and it gives you the file for this that you can give to your front end team or to any other microservice that needs to talk to your own machine. And they've got a nice way of seeing everything that you need. Cool. That's great. I don't totally understand it. I'm like 90% <laughs> there. So we're at like 11 and a half minutes. So we'll wrap this video yeah. up. But the main important thing is in your uh, your journey for learning how Greater Commons is built and hopefully helping us continue to build it, the next step would be to do some learning about uh, Goa. And, uh, and do you have any resources you'd share on that? Maybe in the next video... If you do, we'll, we'll dig around and see if we mm -hmm. find any that stand out, and uh, we'll let you know in the next video. Got anything else you want to share before we end this one? Uh, no. Last thing I want to share is I'm eating popcorn. I went to bed last night at 11.30. I woke up at 4. I couldn't fall back asleep, so at 6.15, I just got out of bed. But I'm uh, running on fumes in popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm slowly munching on popcorn. I'm not 100% here at all. Mm -hmm.